Good morning, church family. I'm Steve, and I'm one of the family members here at uh, Cedar Springs Community Church. We're continuing our study, uh, our series on uh, love. God is love and love dot, dot, dot. Uh, this morning, we're going to look at uh, the fact that love humbles. And uh, our uh, passage will be in uh, Philippians 2, verses 3 through 8. Uh, but let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we look at the whole of Scripture this morning, and we look at your life, your son's life, and we see a life of service. We see a life of, of submitting. We see a life of sacrifice and suffering. Lord, we just ask that you would open our eyes, show us practical ways, real ways that we can really learn to uh, humble ourselves to put the needs of others ahead of ourselves and to ask ourselves, how can we serve each other today? Uh, bless your word and bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's look at the passage. Philippians 2, starting in verse 3 in the New American Standard. Uh, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Verse 7, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, being for, found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So the question uh, starts out, how can we humble ourselves like Jesus? Well, the first thing we can do is we can start to see others the way Jesus sees them. Uh, Jesus sees us uh, and others as uh, beloved, loved of God, uh, created, created by God. We are his creation. He knit us together in our mother's womb. He knew us before the foundation of the world. Uh, we are his children. We are his creation. And if we are called and have answered the call, we are saved by grace. Uh, the next thing we can do is we can see ourselves as God sees us. And of course, all have sinned and fall short of his glory. Uh, and yet he saves us by grace. He sees us as Christ sees us. Right? So we need to ask ourselves daily, how can I serve others and glorify you today, Lord? So we see in verses 7 and 8 that Jesus served and he submitted and he suffered he served as he fed the hungry as he healed the sick as he taught god's word and as he modeled humility jesus submitted he submitted to god he submitted a couple examples would be he submitted in his baptism when he came to came to john and john's like uh lord you should be baptizing me i shouldn't be baptizing you and and jesus just just relax john let, let it be this way for now, that all things might be fulfilled. Jesus was in a position of submission to the Father, and he knew that this was part of the plan. Uh, he submitted uh, in his temptation as after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was tempted in the wilderness uh, rather than exercising his deity the power that belonged to him rightfully, yet he submitted to God and he answered Satan with scripture. He answered with the word of God and he did not allow himself to be sucked in. He submitted to his disciples in a number of ways, one by just washing their feet as an example. He modeled this humility uh, to them and, and then you know, to us. I think one of the most powerful movies that I've seen in this last few years was The Jesus Revolution, where uh, where Chuck Smith uh, got the hippies coming into the church. If you remember, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Uh, but the hippies are coming into the church, and the old guard church 
church membership or complaining that they're messing up the new carpet. So next Sunday, Chuck has set up a bowl and a towel, and he starts washing the bare feet of the hippies before they come in so that they don't mess up the carpet. I mean, I, that, I don't know if that really happened. You have to ask Chuck before, or, you know, ask, ask the Lord when we see him in glory, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, uh, and then he submitted to Rome in the Sanhedrin, allowing himself to be arrested, uh, ramrodded, tried without tried without it in the middle of the night when when anybody that might have been supporting him wasn't invited uh, he submitted to this and then he suffered he suffered verbal abuse he suffered rejection he suffered false accusations uh, he suffered his you know, the ultimate the scourging the death on the cross so he served he submitted and he suffered and we're not called right now to suffer that way uh, but we are called to humble ourselves. So my question, and what I'm asking myself and what I'm asking you, are, so what are some practical ways that we can practice humility amongst each other and, and here at Cedar Springs? Uh, can we find ways to deepen relationships with those who might be new or people you don't know very well? Uh, maybe we need to endure the fear of meeting new people. Uh, just get over that that angst that a lot of people have. Uh, maybe we can practice hospitality, work on that more. Invite somebody over for a meal that you haven't gotten to know or, or uh, just spend some time in fellowship. Uh, even if you don't live in the perfect home for, for entertaining, uh, that's a, that's an act of humility to say, to say, you know what, I don't, I don't care about, you know, appearances or whatever i'm going to i'm going to be obedient i'm going to practice hospitality because we're called to we're called to to share the gifts of god with others um and that too is an act of act of humility just to just to overcome your fear of self-protection we want to protect ourselves from from rejection from humiliation from embarrassment uh and this you know, basically boils down to a little bit of pride. Uh, we're too proud to look stupid. Um, uh, maybe we need to make an effort to get to know more about our neighbors. Pray, pray for them. Pray with them. Uh, like you know, we're going to be going into a study on the art of neighboring, and one of the things one of the things that uh, that it starts out asking is, you know, what do you know about your neighbors? Can you name them? Can you name their kids? Do you know what they do? Uh, what do you know about them? You know, how how neighborly are we really? Uh, an act of humility would be to, you know, to be vulnerable, be open, and let yourself be known. Or find a ministry here at Cedar Springs that could use some help and get involved. That can be an act of humility. You know, we Jesus fed the fed the poor. Uh, at uh, at Harvest House, we're feeding people every week. Uh, back to class, <clears throat> the Power Packs program, we're feeding hundreds of kids in the school district. And these ministries, they just they need they need hands. They need people that can that can roll up their sleeves and pack boxes, drive trucks, pull carts or you know, just pray for needs. So there's a lot of things that we can do um, in our own church to encounter Christ, to encounter his, his humility, to exhibit his humility per se uh, in our own church. And, uh, and I highly encourage you to do that. Uh, also these devotionals, you know, they're open. You know, if God's put something on your heart and you wanna share it with the body, you can do these. Um, you would probably have to endure the the humility of the extra, you know, ten pounds the camera puts on you, and and the fact that you hate hearing your own voice. Trust me, I know. Um, but you're encouraged to do these things to share God's word, to share insights, to share to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I pray that you will ask the Lord. How can I humble myself and, and participate more in furthering your kingdom, Lord God?
Father, I thank you for this time. I hope that it has been beneficial and I hope that uh, people will take it to heart and exercise the humility that you modeled for us with each other. I pray these things in your name. Amen.